Okay, I have to take the word, got it. All right, it's recording. So 10 six Life Factor, welcome. Lorna Welcome, Chin. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Lorna Chin is um, a well-known, um, what we call you, it's not TikTok, but you're also on Instagram, right? And I'm only on Instagram. I do not TikTok. Oh, okay. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself because um, you know all the areas and all the in other interesting things that you do. Go ahead and share uh, with us, Lana. Well, my name is Lorna Chin. I was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. And I'm on Instagram currently, apparently very controversial. And um, well, to be honest with you, I live abroad mostly. I travel back and forth between Jamaica and South Florida and of course New York and Los Angeles for work. Um, I'm a motion picture editor. I do produce also but mostly editing. Oh wow that's very interesting. Well thank you for um, joining me um, today. We want to talk about some of the things that you post on Instagram. It is getting a lot of feedback, a lot of pushback, and it's very controversial in what, you know, based on the responses that that um, you're you're getting. So tell me what, what kind of drive you to start posting on um, Instagram and talk about the Jamaican culture because it, the topics are usually about the Jamaican culture. Well, that was not by choice, to be honest with you. Um, I started off just posting about my life. I started off posting about things that happened in my life. Unfortunately, I am not black <laughs> and I identify as Jamaican. So that's very confusing to a lot of people. And I don't think I would have gotten the kind of responses that I'm getting now were it not for COVID and the current climate, which kind of erupted into what I'm told is Asian hate. I heard about it. I saw it on the news mm -hmm. and it did not affect me because I'm primarily in South Florida and South Florida is a very diverse area. It's very Hispanic. It's very Caribbean. And I tend not to stray too far from home when it comes to my base because I have to keep traveling back and forth between the Caribbean um, for work. So South Florida became my base and um if you didn't know, we have pretty much everything we need to sustain a Jamaican diet and all that stuff here. The climate is similar and everything. So I never really understood what they meant mm -hmm. when they were talking, when, you know, the, the legislature in America and their, their lobbying saying, hey, we need to do something about Asian hate. So that really did not resonate with me until I started getting a lot of pushback on Instagram and, and it took me by surprise because I've never seen or felt racism before, not like this. And um, I continued to do my funny videos and my stand-ups or whatever you want to call it. And it's like, there's a disconnect again. Why is this woman trying to prove so hard she's Jamaican and I'm not, I'm just being me. And you know, part of being Jamaican is that we do these memes like video memes and Hey, if 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 dog not chased you down one road, are you really Jamaican? But you know, coming from somebody that looks like me, it sounds like saying, "Are you trying to say that 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 we're not Jamaicans? What are you trying to say?" And I'm like, "Oh Jesus Christ, here we go again." No, that's not how it works. That's how the culture works, you know. That's kind of how it started, and then the ignorance started. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean it in the Jamaican definition where you just get mad quick. They do get mad quick. Um, ignorance as in you don't know better or you're lacking in knowledge. That's how I put it. And I realized that a lot of people thought that Jamaica was an all Afro nation. Um, homogenous, is that how we pronounce it in Jamaica? Yes. Or in you know, like I say, hom uh, homogenous, um, mm -hmm. that it was just this one thing. And I'm like, no, didn't you realize the motto is out of many one people? Why do you think it is that? And then lo and behold, again, everything is a learning process, you know? So I, I approach everything as a learning process. And so that happened and I go, wait a minute, other people have their own translation of the motto. Because to me, growing up in, 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 in school and being taught civics, out of many one people is supposed to mean 
that all these cultures clashed after 1856. And out of that clash, burst a new nation that was diverse and culturally so tangled and beautiful. And, you know, growing up, I didn't face racism. I wasn't told that, hey, Chinese girl, don't you, you over there, so we over here. So they'll tease you, of course. Mm -hmm. I got that. That is why my skin is so thick, you know, because send you back to China. But that doesn't mean that they weren't going to play with you on the playground or come over and invite you over to sit with them and eat lunch. And never. So, you know, my friends will still joke about that. You know, a cute guy comes up and talk to me. Hi, you single. And they will come up, you don't want a real Jamaican. You know, that's funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then, and, then, and then they catch themselves going, oh, not not, 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 not that you're not a real Jamaican in the Lona. That's a, I mean, and I'm laughing my ass off. You're not going to leave this one down, you know? But it's okay to joke about it. So but what when is you're so but what, when what you're is so different, different now, Laura, Lana? What is so different now? You said, well, you know, you're accustomed to the tease and to the just the the, the taunting about you know having a Chinese um, background, and so what makes this so different now, especially with um, I'm the sure political climate? The political climate definitely makes it more difficult. With, with I mentioned COVID before, right? That added insult to injury. We have Chinese corporations like China Harbor Engineering Company, which has a very bad reputation of coming in, abusing the natural resources of a country. I wouldn't go, I'm not going to say buying up land. They don't buy something that's not for sale. You understand what I'm saying? So wait a minute, uh, let me clarify. So are you saying that these are the arguments. These are the the noise around Chinese immigrants, um, you know, mm -hmm. migrating into different countries. Or um, the, the climate is is slightly different. History repeats itself. It absolutely does. And if we do not learn from our history, we are bound to repeat the mistakes of our past. OK, and that's why you see me focus so much on history in a lot of the reels that I do. It's important because I think a lot of history in Jamaican education has been lost. And in fact, I was just recently told that they don't even teach civics in Jamaica anymore. They're focusing on math and English and all the things. So I'm like, oh, so you guys actually did not, you know, do a civics class because I, I, I'm sure if I went into my garage right now, there's an orange book that says civics for young Jamaicans. So how would you up. describe then what 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 would be the um the 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 paradigm then what would you how would you explain Chinese immigrants um in Jamaica um to, okay. to counter the narratives of the coming in buying up land what 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 can you use to counter that argument to say this is the fact they are coming in and buying up land that's the funny thing they okay. are and it doesn't make me happy. Where the history comes in is when you, what you have to realize is we're not the same tribe. Okay. You see a Chinese person and you think all Chinese are coming in. So when you see my videos, the thing is, oh, my God, colonizer, they're coming in and buying up. And I think Dr. Omar Johnson put my face up on screen and, and, and did a whole lecture on what's wrong with the Chinese buying up land. I'm the wrong person to put up. there. You, can't, you know who for face must go put up there, sir? not even my own, somebody who actually was born in China. Mm -hmm. That's who you're supposed to do that. I'm like three or four generations removed. I can probably trace my lineage to the first Mr. Chin, the reason why Jamaican people call every Chinese person Mr. Chin, Miss Chin. I can be traced back to that man. I'm the wrong person to be putting up there. And I think that it is important for us to know the history. Some of the, the ignorant questions that come up are, what has Chinese people done for Jamaica? You know, don't know the answer to that. That's a really dumb question. Um, Chinese people didn't do anything like invent reggae music. Who do you think invented reggae music? I think I want person to invent reggae music. Hmm? And the irony of that situation is, in that studio, Tosh and Marley and, you know, all those guys was a man named Leslie Kong. And he was one of the producers. And, and I agree so, because yes. there's several others as well. I believe one of- Byron Lee. 
Byron Lee and Patricia Chin. Chin. What's her name? Could you repeat? Patricia Chin and her husband. I can't remember the husband name, but I know Patricia yes. Chin does right. lectures at UWE about, you know, she brought reggae music to the mainstream. Um, Leslie Kong, you know, he was so instrumental in the early days of reggae in terms of the harder they come. He produced all of that, you know. Tony, is it Tony Rebel? All of those guys, you know. I'm not saying that we are we are we we invented it as 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 a subculture of Jamaican culture. I'm saying that out of many one people, we are our motto. We, if it, you know, it's the butterfly effect. If 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 Leslie Kong wasn't there, would it be what it is? Would it sound like what it is without his creative input? You know, with, without Patricia uh, Patricia Shop not being there, without we could probably do a, a whole movie on what if you know those little movies where you take out something and see how how history would have unfolded. It, you know, if Channel One wasn't there, all those things you cannot erase us from the history. And that's a key point. So, is it then that because of so many years that you talk about from eighteen sixty five when um, Chinese immigrants started? Fifty six, fifty six. That's ten year difference. Yeah, I'm thinking about the civil rights, the um, the <laughs> the abolition of slavery. So, um, when the the fact that they arrived and they settled in, and when I mean settled in, they were mainly um passive or invisible. They were just bent on building business in in commerce, and 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 that and was they were passive and invisible in the first part. No, I don't think they were. Remember that they had to work the sugar plantations. Mm -hmm. And they had to work alongside other ethnicities, the Indians, the Irish, and the African descended former slaves. They didn't just come and start open up shop. They worked their indentured labor contracts out, got what they were supposed to get, and decided, I'm, I'm not staying here. I'm not going to do this. I want to do something else. And the reason why they chose commerce, retail, and wholesale business was when you don't speak the native language, you have to put yourself in a position where the customer comes to you. You don't go to the customer. You have to understand the logic and the that's history of why that point. unfolded. That's, that's why that is. That's why, and then, like I said, history keeps repeating itself. And one of the things I wanted to really do in one of my reasons is just pick up the camera and go, look at me one shop to you. Because I do not own a shop. I absolutely don't own a shop. Um, the customer comes to me, not the other way around. So that generational tradition did not get passed on to me when the shop was being, you know, closed down. Lana, you want a shop? No, we don't want a shop. We made a shop. <laughs> However, though, um, Lana, we are talking about even participating in the political structure. We yes, they um, you know, are very active in the music business, as you pointed out. But what were the participation? And the reason why I'm saying this is because. Uh, this is a starting point then for the Chinese community to be more visible and more outspoken and more active then in terms of try you know um participate in the the visible the visible you know visible, the activeness of the culture now that you're coming out and you may be <laughs> you're, you're you're raising your <laughs> Uh, no, you're coming out in in a sense and, and speaking out more. It may seem so different, and you know Jamaican people say, "Well, where were you all this time?" Right? You know, me personally, or or or, or the Chinese Jamaicans, because they're you, you you do realize that the deputy prime minister of Jamaica is Horace Chang. Chang. You're right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Delroy Chuck. All of those people. The deputy prime. That's why when people ask me where, yeah, you, I've been a, you, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I live across the street from Horace Chang in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's the irony of the situation. So when people ask, you know, I think it was the guy from African diaspora. Come, I'm going to pick with him. By the way, what a, what a dunce idiot. Actually accused me of cultural appropriation after him said the whole thing. After him said the two, three, four passports in my hand. Cultural appropriation, seriously, seriously? Didn't, didn't get the point of the video. Um, he said, you know, what's next? Are they going to run for office? Chinese Jamaicans have been running for office and are a part of Jamaican government for decades. Chinese Jamaicans are so integrated into the 
you know, the foundation of Jamaican culture, that when there was a mass exodus of the upper and middle classes in the late 70s to early 80s. And that is another part of history that a lot of people don't know. Manley's social revolution triggered a mass exodus of Jamaicans who had the ability to leave, migrate to the United States, Canada, and the UK. And that emigration jolted the economy, and we still are recovering from that jolt. When I was in prep school, you know, third, th grade three, grade five, the Jamaican dollar was five to one. Now it's 150 odd, you know? And I remember when JLP came into power, when Manly lost the election and we did not become a communist country. I remember all that talk. I remember Reagan coming to Jamaica and the Secret Service and the soldiers up on Stony Hill because of the route that they were driving Reagan through. I remember all of that. And then to grow up and read about how the CIA manipulated Jamaican politics threw us into debt, forced us into debt with the IMF and to have foreigners living in the United States, like myself, who are a part of the problem, blaming the Chinese. That's absolute ludicrous. Learn the history, understand the why, and then you will learn to stop blaming other people for your problems. You also have to understand, and I, and, and I support you on this, and, and um, hopefully I don't get any pushback in terms of- You won't get pushed back with anything from it because I speak the truth and I speak it so bluntly. Which, uh, no, I, I'm agreeing with you, but pushback from others per se. So the just the education piece, I 100% I agree, where we don't understand the, the, the political, um, underlining of why things happen, you know, when things are happening and we only get in um, just tidbits and once it trickle down, you know that uh, stories change and, and the point of view change and we really end up with not much. And so what do you think you can do then to, <laughs> she's smiling, to um, you know, using this platform, the fact that you're getting you're getting so much attention, to inform us and to inform, um, even you take it as a, a school tour for you know, say, um, high school students, because I believe you, I I, I um, appreciate the point when you said there's a lot of things. The civic education aspect is uh, has been removed. And the education piece about the history and the out of many one uh, motto is not understood and we need to reclaim it and make sense of it. Because there's, a, for example, it's not just Chinese population in Jamaica, there's uh, Syrian, there's Lebanese, there's um, Jewish population and all sorts of different, um, you know, um, ethnic groups from Europe and, and Asia. So it is unfair for them to simply target one group. So what do you think about making, uh, um, you know, just doing a tour of the high school to and create like an educational piece to informed, um, because it seems as if, if the people that are coming at you um, on, on, on Instagram, they are, they are so many different pieces that people may believe um, the noise over the facts. Okay, so I didn't ask for this platform. It was just, it was pretty much dropped on my front door. Yeah. It feels like Amazon had a drone and mm -hmm. he goes, here you go. This is an Instagram account with all the bells and whistles turned on. When I say turned on, I have never seen an account grow like this and I do this for a living. I had 154 followers and I made a video to my 154 followers. <laughs> and where are you now? Oh, close to 70,000 in a matter of four months. Well, that's incredible. Once it went past 30, all the bells and whistles started to turn on. And I was gaining about 10,000 followers a week if I posted. And then there are times when I just get busy with work and I stop posting. 
And that's when I say all the bells and whistles turn on, the monetizations, all of it is on, subscriptions, everything was just thrown at you. And I'm sitting there going, hey guys, what am I supposed to do with this account? It was an accident. And what I know I'm really good at is pissing people off. It's a, it's a gift, trust me. And it's why I, I never, I stayed away from this. Whenever I did my videos, I kept my face out of the video. I was doing all of these cooking videos. Nobody knew I wasn't black. Oh my God. Uh, one day I'm going to put my face to the camera and I forgot to turn on my fake American accent. And <laughs> I do fake an American accent because I just, I am tired of the question. So why do you sound black? No, I'm not, I'm not black. I'm, I'm Jamaican. We're Jamaicans. Yeah. But it, it, um, how did you guys get to Jamaica? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. You know what? Let me just fake an American accent. And we just avoid the 50 questions. How can I use my platform? Well, you see the reason why my, videos went viral in the first place unfortunately is because of the controversial nature in which I did them yeah I have been doing videos and there are videos on YouTube and Instagram jamaicans.com is a very popular forum that I enjoy they're uh, Wayne Chen you know they put these things out there and people you know uh, who are interested in the topic read it what I was able to do is I was able to reach people who wouldn't normally read or watch those videos because they don't care. What I did was I triggered them. Why did I trigger them? It was a challenge. Can you hit 1 million views in your next, in your next reel? I said, absolutely. Would you say this? Yes, but not quite like that. Okay, then you, it's, it's a dare. I might hold my bear, boom. And that was when I dropped the African video. Jamaica is not an African country. Why did I say that? Well, I was responding to a very specific question. And what happens, because I was new to the Instagram thing, is when somebody deletes their question or their comment and you respond to it, that, that little thing at the top goes away. And the video loses its context and then the thing goes away. And I go, oh, shoot, I just wasted a whole reel on that one. So I was like, you know what? I don't care. I went through all the trouble of recording that damn thing. So we're just going to do it. And the question was basically, why are the Chinese invading all these all Afro countries? Um, that was what that was the first part of the question. And why do the Africans allow the Chinese into Jamaica? That was the second half of the question. And the answer to that question was because Jamaica is not an African country. It is not a black country. It does not mean that there are no Africans there. It does not mean that the, the, the majority of people are not black. Informally, yes, it would be considered a black country because, you know, majority of it, but legally, by definition, we define, we are defined by our motto out of many one people. When you look us up on the internet, on JIS, on any official, um, you know, even in the constitution, we are, an ethnically diverse society. Therefore, the majority being Africans descended cannot legally dictate to the minority and tell them that they are less Jamaicans, you know, and vice versa, you know. It's one of the only places in the world where the minority is so included in the nationality that to take it away would cause a great disruption. Just like I said, it jolted the economy when that mass exodus happened. So yes, I presented the information that, and this is information that you get on, like I said, JIS, Jamaicans.com. That, that, those are my sources. Um, but the way I presented it hit a chord, struck up a conversation and brought people into that conversation that would normally have read those things and tried to educate themselves on those things because I triggered it. So do let, I let me think that. Let me do I think that triggering a conversation is a beautiful thing? Yes, I do. <laughs> Wonderful. So is it because you uh, maybe the emphasis on I'm not black, I'm Chinese, or I'm not black, I'm Chinese Jamaican? Could that be? And then trying to, you know, kind of walk in the other shoes, trying to make sense of why you may, why some people may feel triggered about this type of um, categorization. Um, for, there are two I, types of trigger. 
there's two types of triggers. Those who believe that I am trying to erase the African and and then Perfect. that's the first one. And then there are people who just cannot grasp the fact that it's not what they, they thought it was. I've I've met people who absolutely say and bluntly believe that you cannot be Jamaican unless you have African blood. And and it is taken from just the 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 one drop rule that they have in the U.S. Um, if, I, if if there's a one drop rule, I am I am definitely of African descent. I'm sorry, to, <laughs> I hate to break it to people. Two of my two of my grandparents decided to marry other Asian people, <laughs> but if you look at the rest of my family, I don't look like the rest of my family. That's the truth. And that and and the thing is, you know, it's not that. Um, people who are being critical of you should know that because um, it, it's it is it or should they to make the conversation seems more authentic or to make your position seems more legitimate what do you think does the background in terms of the family heritage and the diversity within your family um, no because they don't terms? know the diversity because they've never asked for it they just judge with their eyes when I show you the passports, it should have immediately told you that we've been here for a while. <laughs> we have, we are not Chinese. There was a funny story about the Chinese riots that were happening. Um, I, would, I don't know when they happened. There were several Chinese riots. Um, when I, they're called Chinese riots because at some point in history, uh, my, my mom talks about it. I can't remember the the year, because there were at least two or three of them. Downtown, a Chinese man, as the story goes, shopkeeper, found one of his employees stealing, and he apparently boxed her. Mm -hmm. And she went and got to tell our man, and of course says, oh, how dare you? And so we got bundled every Chinese shop. Well, when you talk to my parents or my mother, our shop was not burned down, is what she would tell you. I personally don't have a shop, so... <laughs> Um, she said that the people in the neighborhood basically knew because they have sense that my grandparents never boxed nobody and it had nothing to do with we would surround we were protected by our community because we unlike what they think we do not isolate ourselves we are part of the community we talk to people my parents don't even speak Chinese they speak maybe as much Chinese as I speak Spanish because we learned it because we have to communicate with certain people, you know? Um, so they never really attacked. But as that story went on, I was told by another source that a group of people who were in that community that was, you know, having the controversy with, oh, the, this Chinese man got like a black woman. And so we got bond on every shop. They picked up themselves, marched themselves down to the Chinese embassy and asked for help. Why are you guys not helping us? And the Chinese embassy responded, what do you want us to do? You're not Chinese, you're Jamaicans. Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting story. Yes. And then there's this misconception that black people cannot go to China and claim Chinese citizenship. So how is it that I can come to Jamaica and claim Jamaican citizenship? If you're comparing two different countries with two different political systems and two different history. Jamaica is more like the United States that was colonized by the British. Mm -hmm. You can come to the United States as any ethnicity or ethnic background and claim American citizenship. And that's the thing they don't understand. Just like that, any country, whether you're Indian, Jewish, Chinese, whatever, you could be Russian. You're born in a Jamaica, you're Jamaicans. I don't make the rules. I cannot go to China and claim Chinese citizenship. I'm not Chinese. And if I even tried to claim my ancestral land, which I did, by the way, as a joke, I did an inquire. I'm like, hold on a second, Lanagiwe? You know, where was my, I traced my lineage and I asked, I said, hey, so um, where did, you know, where was the village? And I found the village. I found black people living in the same village. And I, I, I had spoke to them through my translator, the taxi driver. And it was a very bad translation. And they were telling us, we are Jamaican Chinese people. They are dark skinned. 
Um, I came here from Jamaica. My father is Chinese. My mother is Black from J Jamaica. I came up here to work in the fields with grandma and we decided not to leave. And I'm like, okay. Another lady came and said, you know, I was kidnapped by my father and brought to China. And when I was in my 30s, I went back to Jamaica to find my mother. And your grandmother was my translator. And oh, now here you that. are. And I'm, I would like to be your translator, but I cannot because I don't speak English. And my mother was sort of picking up the language. She said, I'm only picking up like 20% of what they're saying. And the taxi driver looks at me and goes, the reason for that is you learned Hakka from your mother who wasn't a Hakka speaker. She was a Bunti speaker. And I'm like, what is Bunti? They go, that's Cantonese. I go, oh, really? And then I started to learn about my grandmother. And so she had to learn another dialect just so she could speak to her husband and speak to her children. And then that dialect, because they moved to Jamaica, when people keep moving around and migrating, dialects mix. And out of that mix comes a new dialect. So the reason why my mother wasn't understanding most of what they were saying is because there were at least four different dialects that were mixing in that one community. There's nothing pure about the Hakka culture anymore. And then they told us, if you want pure Hakka food, because the food was horrible, by the way, you have to go back to Jamaica. That's where the food was mostly um, in Taiwan and maybe some Singapore. Hakka culture is most preserved in Jamaican Chinese food. I'm like, seriously? We can't not taste good unless you drop a scotch bonnet pepper in there. <laughs> you know, seriously. If you go to a Jamaican Chinese and they put, a scotch, they put the soy sauce and they drop a scotch bonnet pepper in there. And we still do that. And I'm like, well, to be honest with you, it not taste good without the scotch bonnet pepper. Is, you know, so that's that that's the history that we're speaking of here we're not the same chinese that are so-called colonizing jamaica we are a different tribe of chinese we don't even speak the same language and we do not consider ourselves chinese anymore okay so let's let's accept that point that 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 as facts as as, as the facts that you're stating how are all um are the chinese community of um that the ones that were born or the fourth, the, the, as you said, the fourth generation, how do they view themselves in relation to the new set of immigrants that have been coming in since the 90s and the 2000s and so on? And they speak the, the, their, their, their language. They, um, and there's also, there's, there, and I've read some of this, concern about their treatment of Jamaicans, ethnic Jamaicans, meaning, um, you know, the locals. They're, they're, cons they're customers then, put it that way, they're customers. Yes. How do you create a, a separation? When I say separation, how can they tell the difference in terms of, you know, they're going to group, well, if you're all part of the Chinese community, not in the way that you just describe it, right? Okay. Because, for example, yeah. people leave from overseas and come to Jamaica and something happened. They're going to put everybody in one basket and said, well, Jamaican people did this to me or something of the sort. Now okay. we are seeing a lot of video coming out of Jamaica with the, so, some really bad treatment of Jamaicans who are customers in some of these shops or stores that are owned by Chinese or newly arrived Chinese. How do you, and you have to understand where some of this resentment is coming from. I do understand where it's and, coming from because I get to that myself. And be ready to send them back too. Huh. <laughs> yes. My mother went into one of those stores and they gave her the same treatment. And she looked at me and go, I can't see why them said we must send them back, you know. Them feasty. Them feasty. How you gonna come up people country and I treat people so? So, do, so should so can you be an ally in that way and talk about that then? In, in I have been an ally in that way since the 1990s. I was vocal about it and I was threatened and told to shut up. And I backed off because I was in fear of my life. By whom? I saw this coming as early as the 1990s. There's another reason why I don't have a shop. And it's because I cannot compete with the Chinese. You see, the Chinese enjoy a thing called tax-free business downtown. 
And you as a Jamaican would not have a cannot. tax we don't we don't have that and that is an unfair advantage that they are taking and it's a loophole they're taking advantage of that and they get what 10 years on the that rule of tax-free business and when that 10 years is up they simply dissolve the business and start a new one and start the the, the thing all over again when you are not paying tax that is a huge advantage over other people i cannot compete with that and i'm going to tell you a story let's just just pick one staple item and I'll just tell you for a fact that it wasn't just one item, it was multiple items. Let's just say we're talking about sardines. And we buy sardines from the manufacturer at $5, from the distributor at $5, right? And as a wholesale, we have to sell that back at a profit. Let's just call it that for the sake of an analogy. Yeah. Well, how is it that the Chinese downtown are getting the sardines for $1? That, all right. So you call, you know, the company that brings in sardines to Jamaica and go, excuse me, aren't we all buying from the same person? How are you selling it to me at five dollars, but they're getting it at one dollar? That's not fair. Well, you see, Mr. Chin, them Chinese don't they have a different set of Chinese, you know. The whole of them make up and buy a whole trail a load of sardine and just bring it in themselves. I'm like, wait, what? They can do that? Do they know each other? But they stick together as a community. As Jamaicans, we don't stick together. When one Jamaican see another Jamaican climbing up, they want to drag him down, kill him, go be him. That's Jamaican culture. So now me and my, my bright self came up with this idea. I said, all right, fine. Let's get all of the uptown shopkeepers and let's see if we can go buy a trailer load too. So we tried it. <laughs> this is the 1990s. We tried it. We got it for one dollar, maybe, but we still can't compete because we have to pay tax. Got it. Got it. Got it. When oh. was it? Donkey said, "We're on a level." When we're on a level, we're on a level. So I look at that. I go, hey, "Shit, I'm out. I'm not doing this. No, I don't compete like that." And so that rule, I understand why that rule is there, that they need that foreign investment. They need the Chinese to build up the downtown area. And I'm sure the, this, this has been going on since Siaga. I think Siaga was the one who put it in. They're taking advantage of that. And what I think we need to do is to encourage local business over foreign investments. There is absolutely no reason why Jamaican people can't go downtown and open up a shop and enjoy the same privilege. Well, you just explain. You, you just explain why, of course, and, and you explain why in terms of the support. People who should be their... getting the tax-free support are the poor people in Jamaica, not the foreigners. Okay, they have it backwards, and I don't have a problem saying that. Mister Andrew Holness can come chat to me if he wants. I don't have a problem saying that. How much of your content, hopefully, will address some of this? this disparity or this this um you know unfair advantage that you're mentioning that i'm and, trying and to focus less on the politics if they want to talk politics like you i'm willing to talk about it it is generally not in my nature to speak on politics on my own platform unless you push my buttons well and i Lana, like to mess with you every me. social opinion is a political um it, it, it it's just yes it's and when i do it generally has a twist to it that's the thing all my videos have a twist to it and if it's too serious it does not go viral i did one called stop blaming other people for your problems find your way back home invest in your country you know how many you know how many views that got Two hundred thousand tops i do another video and it's, you know, full of drama and controversy. 1.2 million views. I'm like, people don't want the truth. People don't want solutions. They just want controversy, ray, ray, and laughs. Yes, because they can't, they don't know how to respond to those, to, to, to those facts. They don't know how to respond to that objective approach to doing business and getting things done and uplifting the country and so on. Um, have you ever tried then to have a conversation with um, the, the, the newly arrived Chinese um, immigrants who probably 
um, another 50 years from now, will say that, you know, when their children and their children, children, um, you know, uh, produce in Jamaica, will say that they're Jamaicans as well. So how do you start yes. the conversation now to say um, there's a competitive advantage and that's one of the reasons why um, Jamaicans who view themselves <laughs> as um, Africans which is a whole nother, um, you know, history lesson there, would feel like they're being colonized, would feel as if they've been left out, would feel like as if they're being, um, you know, being used or on a plantation because you have no choice but to buy from these um, arbidasheries that are owned by by Chinese. And again, they're, it's we're not talking about, you know, all Chinese look the same, but... The, from the Jamaican, they don't. By the way, they do not. <laughs> I mean, of course, but from a Jamaican mindset, they're seeing people coming in, and and the 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 name a Chinese is attached to it. Of course, they're going to group everybody together, and and that's okay. Remember, I told you history repeats itself. Did you know that there was a restriction on Chinese immigration for a while? And it ne was never lifted until the nineteen, the mid to late nineteen forties. You mean to Jamaica or to the U.S.? To Jamaica. I'm trying to remember the exact dates. I think it was the nineteen twenties, late nineteen twenties, or early nineteen thirties to the late nineteen forties. There was concern. This is pre-independence, so you know it's not the the current Jamaican government. We're talking about mm -hmm. British Jamaican government. There was concern that the Chinese were taking over. They kept coming in droves. And when they landed, they set up shop. And they were taking over the retail business, retail wholesale industrial business. They were literally taking over. History repeats itself. Learn from history and stop blaming other people for your problems. So what? What the government did was they placed restrictions on Chinese immigration that says you cannot immigrate to Jamaica unless you spoke four foreign languages or something like that. And that you had to have a sponsor that said that you that this person is going to make sure that you're not a burden on Jamaican society and that they had to have a shop or something. There were all these rules and you had to be able to speak and write and all these things. And if you didn't pass this test, you ain't coming to Jamaica. Well, it didn't really stop them because they kept coming but it did, it slowed it down. So if you think that you, there weren't a lot of Chinese in Jamaica in the 1960s, go watch Dr. No, 007. You remember Dr. No? Yes. My husband said <laughs> to me, I did not realize that there were so many Chinese in Jamaica. And then I'm watching Dr. No. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, where all them Chinese people are come from? <laughs> and then I, I meet you and then I did the research and I go oh crap there's a lot of you there there's a lot more Chinese than, than you see now the older ones we were there were a lot of them the thing about it is when they started coming in droves you tried to stop them and that's what you're, you're trying to do you, you see it as colonization they saw it back then as colonization and they're seeing it again like exactly. it's colonization what ended up happening um, was when they finally lifted the restriction in the 1940s, because it really was racist, by the way, the um, the remaining Chinese who were in Jamaica were able to send for the rest of their families. And around this time, you have to realize there's a civil war going on in China. There was also a war with Japan. And people were starving. And um, the Hakka tribe... I learned later on that Hakka actually means visitor. They were not welcome in China either. Then they kept, they were like nomads, pretty much the lost tribe that kept migrating from the North all the way to the South, trying to find where they belong. When communists took hold of China, they left in droves, okay? The Hakka people do not like communism. They do not like the Chinese government, the, the communist party in particular. You'll find them in Taiwan, which is a democratic country. You'll find them in Singapore. You will find the Hakka people in 
every part of the world. You can throw a dart on the map. I guarantee you there's a hacker there. And what these people did was they decided that they were going to go out in the world and form new nations and forget their old ways. And that's why the hacker food and the hacker culture is, is dying. There are groups right now trying to save it. So around the 1940s, 50s, 60s, there was a movement to try and preserve the culture. Mm -hmm. Because what was happening was the immigration of indentured laborers was like 100 Chinese men to maybe four Chinese women. There was no way 100 men were going to mate with four Chinese women. So those, those guys ended up, if they didn't die um, from disease or whatnot, because it was hard labor, those guys ended up taking Indian wives, Irish wives, African wives, and having children with them. So they were starting to not look Chinese at all. Because <laughs> you're looking at our you know, generation. Once you got past half, the person doesn't look Chinese. They become ethnically ambiguous. They look like Lisa Hanna, you know? I can show you pictures of my family. We they look ethnically ambiguous. They look like coolie is basically what they look like. So now that now in the 1940s and they have lifted this ban and finally they, they can bring Chinese people in. So what did two of my grandfathers do when they, their first wives died? They sent for a beautiful Chinese bride from Hong Kong, which was British colonial. So here comes an injection of new Chinese women to the society in an attempt to preserve a culture. That's what cultures do. It doesn't matter if you're black, Indian or whatever, they're going to try to save their culture. And from that lineage, two of my my mother and my father, who just happened to be mostly Chinese, got together. The rest of my family, they didn't want to honor that tradition at all. So if I look a little bit more Chinese than the rest of my family, that's why. And so, so with this little history that you provide here now, how well known is this? In, it is absolutely well known. In, in, in the Jamaican schools, for example, in the Jamaican schools. They, don't teach, they, they obviously don't teach it. It was in the book when I remember eighth grade, that second form history. I, I don't have that book. I kept my fifth and sixth form books. Though That history was there that the indentured laborers came. But when it comes to like recent history, like what happened in the 70s with Michael Manley, right. when it comes to history about them trying to stop Chinese immigration into Jamaica because of that, that history is not taught. I mean, I don't mean to make fun of African-American history month, which we're currently in. Um, to me, black history is Caribbean history. Chinese history is Caribbean history. Indian history is Caribbean history. That is taught from first form all the way up to sixth form. You understand? That's where I'm coming from. Uh, yeah, they threw in the Russian Revolution in there, but there was a reason for that. So, um, but the little intricacies, when I say history repeats itself, and I know these little nuances, you know how I know all this stuff? Because people cussed me out and I went and read. <laughs> so let me, the, 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 the other part that's missing as well, in order to be informed about the, the, the Chinese culture in Jamaica is the fact you're mentioning the tribe, your 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 you know the tribe that you um originated from and or your family and this is not known this is not clearly known i think everybody again is just group as chinese my it question is book. for it example when in the book when, it was when, in the book when they celebrate it it um, the chinese culture in jamaica do you find that it becomes tribal or everybody just merged together i don't celebrate chinese culture in jamaica <laughs> Or when, okay, when um, anybody else does that then? This, when the other Chinese um, actually do it, do you recognize that if any a, a distinction in their culture or is it known? Are we informed about the people that are coming in and living amongst like the native Jamaicans then? Like I said, it was in the book that the, the Jamaican Chinese before the influx of immigrants in the 80s and 90s our mm -hmm. Hakka lineage, H-A-K-K-A, -A -A, Hakka. They spoke mm -hmm. a dialect called Hakka. And they came from Southern China. And if they didn't come from Southern China and speak Hakka, they spoke Cantonese and they came from Hong Kong, which is a British colony. And Jamaica also, British colony. This is supposed to be well known. If you didn't pay attention in school, then it went 
over your head. And then there's this thing about reading and comprehension, your ability to tell the difference between a fact and an opinion and to read historical fact and form a conclusion is of vital importance. That is something that they teach you in school, in Jamaican school. And I'm going to tell you the truth. While a lot of Jamaicans have problems with comprehension, the majority of them that have comprehension problems are in the United States of America. That's why in a video where it went viral, it's a pure dance people, they are foreign. And they may have a problem with, it's not the Jamaicans at home. The Jamaicans at home, no. It's not that may have the problem with. I'm not saying I've, no, a few dance people not here and here in Jamaica, but the majority of them are in the United States of America. And them don't know the culture and them a dash this and a top. But why can't you be Afro-Jamaican? There's no fucking thing as Afro-Jamaican. Bleep me out right there, sir. Bleep it. There is no <laughs> such thing as an Afro-Jamaican. Now make me cuss bad word. We do not call ourselves that. Now make people cuss you. Let me say something about that because that's interesting when um people are saying, you know, using the term African, they're African Jamaican or their or Jamaica is is um part of Africa, which is interesting. I can't remember, I cannot remember at all. I know there are songs, I mean, about the African consciousness, like uh, I think it was Peter Tosh singing this song says, no matter your nationality, as long as you have an identity of an African. But I know that Jamaicans, especially those in diaspora, identify themselves by their ethnicity, which is Jamaican, not black, not black, or in terms of the color category that is imposed by the colonial system. So it is interesting in the last, I would say from my memory, um, 20 years or so, that the, the Black identity is now more embraced. I do remember- there is, a, there is a movement. It is a movement and it's a, it's a wonderful movement. It, 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 it's something I think Garvey would be proud of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then there's you taking it too far, okay? I think Jamaica got it right, more right than America. America's first motto was out of many one, you know, from many one. It was a Latin, so by the translation, it was close to ours. Mm -hmm. And then they changed it to in God we trust. It's, it, it, it was there and then they decided to do away with it. And then Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, came to Jamaica, to UE, and he did this wonderful speech. I should probably put it in one of my reels where he said, you know, in Jamaica, we don't see each other as a Canadian Jamaican or a Chinese Jamaican or an Indian Jamaican. They're just one people. And that he hoped one day that America would do the same. The, 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 the Black movement is important to America because in America, you are segregated and being told that Black people live over here and you're African-American. And I know Jamaicans abroad going, excuse me, I'm not African-American, I'm exactly. Caribbean. <laughs> they exactly. take a, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I'm not even an American. Why are you calling me an African-American? I'm Jamaican. So the, I do, the Jamaican identity is different. And when people of, were born in Jamaica and raised in America and they, they don't immerse themselves into the culture, they become confused as to how we as Jamaicans move as a culture. And that is something when I say I don't move too far from home, I did not move too far away from where my roots are. My roots are Jamaican. I do not identify as Chinese because I do not speak Chinese. And to be honest with you, they would not accept me because I'm a little bit too vocal about the free Hong Kong movement. I'd probably be thrown in jail. I'm not even going to apply for a Chinese visa anymore because I, yeah, I kind of opened my mouth one too many times and said, mm -mm. you promised England that Hong Kong was going to be free and no, they're not, that's not right. And of course, there are all these things that are happening in China. They're basically modern slaves over there. And if you're, if you stalk against the government and you're a Muslim or a Christian, they throw you in a concentration camp and they reprogram you. I don't put up with that. I'm so a democratic thinker of free speech. So, Lana, you're fighting the many battles. <laughs> you're fighting the many you, battles. If, I think I take more. I think I take more offense to being called a Chinese than anything else because you have to remember my ancestors left a country, or you know maybe you want to call it the motherland because mm -hmm. they didn't like it, and my parents rebelled against the culture. My mother doesn't even use chopstick and you can't get her to drink tea. Hmm. It's that bad, you know? 
so the new Chinese in um I would in a, I guess if you look at Geta Kirk, he, he pretty much when he decided that he wanted to be Jamaican and he signed up for Jamaican citizenship, China turned their back on him. He, if he wants to go to China, he has to get a visa. Okay, that's how that works. He's no longer Chinese. That's, he gave that up is his thing. Is this a well known yeah. fact in Jamaica or is it like an inside he was he was on Smile Jamaica and he said it on Smile Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And somebody tried to put me in the same category as him. And I'm like, don't don't even try that because he was born in China. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I literally can trace my lineage to 1856. That's two different tribes. And you know, even when you look at him when I first saw him when he did his first viral video. Mm -hmm. Even my mother go, he doesn't look Jamaican. <laughs> he doesn't. We can tell each other apart. Um, the, the new arrivals, if they decide to be Jamaicans, they will and should stop sending money to China. They will and should embrace Jamaican and Western culture and their allegiance to the Communist Party. That's first and foremost. Send their children to school like my parents did and not try to homeschool them or send them to private school with white people. That is truly embracing Jamaican culture. And if they don't do that, then they're not one of us. And if they're taking their money and not reinvesting it into the country, and I'm going to get, I'm going to say something now that's going to piss people off. I believe that there is human trafficking happening in Jamaica regarding Chinese people. We have these people coming into Jamaica and buying up supermarkets. I think one of my friends in high school had a supermarket in Ocherias. And when the last time I was in Ocherias, I thought I was going to say hi to her. So I went to the supermarket to go see what I go on. And when I went in there, there were all these Chinese people and they didn't speak English very well. So I made a phone call and I go, hey, welcome to Jennifer and the supermarket. But they had a supermarket up here, Chinese people, they are one. They go, oh, we sold the place. And you know, so you sold it to Chinese people? Yeah. You go back into the supermarket, you start to talk to the Chinese people and they don't like it there. Like, well, if you don't like it here, what are you doing here? And then I realized, wait a second, half one of don't have work permits. This is human trafficking. You were brought here to work in a supermarket without a work permit. And then I talked to people from Ministry of Labor and I hear, so when road work are gone and Ministry come for the spot, check, holy pa, undocumented Chinese workers are running. Oh, that's interesting. So what is the government human doing about it? Not a freaking thing. Hum this is human trafficking. And you know, when they say, oh, we need to import more Chinese laborers because we can't find enough skilled Jamaican laborers. Bullshit. Bleep me again. Sorry. But you met me mad, of course. That is absolute crap. And I'm going to tell you why. In 20, either 2021 or 2022, the Human Brain Drain Index ranked Jamaica number two in the world. That means other than Samoa, which was number one, Jamaica supplies the world with intellectual talent. Imagine that. Now let's think about this. Remember telling about throwing a stone and hitting a hacker? You do not throw a stone in the United States and not hit a Jamaican in a, in a hospital. <laughs> Yeah. So the first, the first person, the first American to have gotten the COVID vaccine, and let's interview her. And a woman opens her mouth and I go, "That is not an American. That is a Jamaican." Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the odds of that? Hmm? Americans, Canadians, UK, they set up recruitment camps and take our nurses and they take our teachers, and they took me as well. I'm a part of that problem. And I know that I'm a part of the problem, which is why I try so hard to educate people and say, we as Jamaicans in the diaspora, we need to organize and help our country instead of casting stones and saying, look, say China, buy up Jamaica. No, no, we left. We left. We do not support. We, not, we do not take our money back to the country. So you don't have a right to complain and say China is taking over. Go back and buy back your own country. Stop That's being a problem. part of the problem. Stop blaming other people for your problems. They haven't bought everything yet and it can still be sold. But the diaspora needs to be organized and we are not. Because as a people, as a Jamaican people, when we see each other going up, 
our instinct is to pull each other down. Whereas the Asians, the Chinese, they are marching in unison because they're a communist government and that is the ideology of communism. Everyone's equal, everyone moves, everyone does what the government says. Well, I would want to be really hard for us to compete with that. I would want to think that Jamaica, um, you know, in terms of their, is a collective group. They, I, 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 that's what I would want to think um, are more community oriented. They help each other and so on. And the Chinese are the same thing. They're very collective. They work within their family. They work within their groups and so on. However, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still baffled about the dormancy in terms of business and building business and 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 thriving in 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 in, in commerce as other groups. Uh, because the Indians are now competing with the Chinese in Jamaica as well, which um, so there's a battlefield going on, and Jamaican and they're fighting over the um, you know the, the Jamaica as a consumer, and they're feeding it. One of my biggest concern is why you know how the government is monitoring um, products coming into Jamaica. For example, when you said that. A group of Chinese, um, you know, business owner can, you know, buy a truckload of um, products. Sometimes some of these products do not have, are not in the English language, which is one of, you know, the language that we speak. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's just simply in um, the, the the Chinese uh, print or the Indian um, language. <laughs> And yet we're buying it because we're simply tell, you know, the, we just trust. We trust what. The, the, the Chinese business owner is telling us and we trust what the Indian business owner is telling us. So I know it, I, I, I don't want to believe that I, um, to focus on the Chinese coming in. The government is allowing it, right? And, encour government and encouraging it. And now that they found oil off the coast of China, the Arabs are coming. The, mm -hmm. You never know. The Arabs are coming into Jamaica. There, you know, so you never see who wants to shake hands with um sheiks and all the and yeah. I didn't see they that. found oil off the coast of Jamaica and we're about to sell that one to another foreign government. Oh Lord. And they found gold in Clarendon after they tell us in high school that there was no gold in Jamaica. They found gold in Clarendon, real gold, and they sold the rights to, to mine that gold to an Australian company. Already? Then, after, that's done already? Yes, from 10 or 10. 10 15 years ago, if you had 100,000 US dollars, you could have invested in a gold bond at Sajikor. Wow, that's interesting. And that gold bond was paying about 15% every quarter. It takes money to make money. Okay, so when people say, Oh, I'm not coming back to Jamaica, to invest. Okay, yeah, what happened at SSL was a horrible, horrible thing, and it set us back as a people. But let's talk about why the foreigners and the Indians and the Chinese are coming in to buy up Jamaica, the same country that me and the other people in the diaspora have left because it's valuable and we do not see the value in what we have let me tell you the truth jamaica has the fountain of youth and if if we're not careful the chinese and the indians and the other people they're going to buy that and then we have to go pay them to use our own natural resources and it really burns me because i don't know who to talk to about that if you are a developer, a real estate developer, and you are of Jamaican lineage, call me. Let's talk about this because I know things that I'm holding on to right now because I don't want it to go to a foreigner. You know, it hurts. It hurts to see that we don't own Blue Mountain Coffee. We don't own the ports. We don't even own JPS. I think JPS stands for Japanese Public Service now. Okay. What about the roadways? I heard that the, the Chinese... Um, they have uh, modernized the the highways and now they hold the to the the toll in No, the toll boots are owned by I think a French company. French, French. Um, so the Europeans own that. People are coming in and buying up Jamaica. It's not the Chinese. A lot of people are coming up and buying up Jamaica because we have left Jamaica unrepaired and unsupported. We do not organize like they do, and. I feel a snake eating itself. And when I say things like Jamaican, see another Jamaican going up and they and they, they pull them down, it, 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 it happens at a macro level and a micro level. Uh, it was just in the news the other day, um, a, a hot new architect was killed. Somebody 
just drove up and, and took him out. And when you read the article, why would they kill this man? It was jealousy. He took the construction industry by storm and somebody doesn't like that and boom, you're dead. The guy who started Telstar, the, one of the first cable companies in Jamaica, um, it was the same thing. This was before Flo came in. Somebody walked up to him on the street, called his name when he responded, and boom, the man dead. That is Jamaican culture. It used to be like if you don't, if you envy somebody, you call you Obi man. Nowadays, if you envy somebody, you call a hit man. One man. Yes. <laughs> That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So that is the could, culture. You could be the voice, Lana. You could be the voice in this um 2023 and 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 just make it a tour, make it a whirlwind tour and, and talk about, you know, taking back Jamaica from, you know, from that brain drain industry and 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 also bringing the culture in you know together in terms of the newly arrived um chinese or or any immigrants coming into jamaica and talk about more how to invest um you know are the chinese building schools in jamaica are they building are they giving back do you know i don't i don't know because um i don't also don't want to say that kirk is not a real jamaican <laughs> <laughs> because because he wasn't born there. Right. I, I know I, I'm going to give the new arrival some slack because I was there longer mm -hmm. and that's natural um, because I don't want to be classified as that because I believe that I have more stake than they do. But what you're going to find is that from the moment you're born in a Jamaica, you're Jamaican. Yes. The, being Jamaican is a way of life. It's a cult. You know, if you're immersed in the culture, you're immersed in the culture. So it really hurts when you see people who are not who identify as Jamaicans and live abroad trying to tell us who we are when we have to live in the country and and be with the people and move with the culture and you don't and then you're coming to tell us what we are no I'm definitely going to push back because I refuse to be told by foreigners that I'm a guest in my own country that not gonna work I'm Jamaican I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand the culture as well because it's not easy to understand the Jamaican culture a lot of people you know sometimes people try to you know um explain <laughs> even the, the the relationship dynamics among Jamaican and it's it you know we still cannot capture it fully because of the the um the kind of um polygamy that takes place in Jamaica in terms of the, the their relationship um you know where where um you may have your wife but you have a a, a girlfriend on the side those it's things not, are it's called the side dish now it's i don't i didn't want to force and the side dish <laughs> i didn't want to say it that way i found this in, i saw this in the glee uh, in the green order observer that referred to it as the side dish and the main course and when your side court the the side dish don't know that the side dish is not the main course i'm like what yeah <laughs> Or, or the whole jacket system in Jamaica. So you really, if, 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 if your I daddy's say... daddy's not your daddy, but your daddy don't know. <laughs> you remember that song? So what I'm saying is, the fact that you know exactly what I'm talking about, the fact that you live and breathe the culture, it, it is, I, I can understand why it would be so upsetting for someone to say that because you have a Chinese heritage that you are not Jamaican. Um, but you know the education piece is important, and you're doing it. I saw that that video when you bring out the the globe and you start pointing out, um, you know, this is Africa and this is where Jamaica is, and I'm like, okay, um, you can barely, you know, um, you know that it it is it is touched it touched something in you. But what I'd love for you, you know, and you know, I know you're busy and you have your life and your career to do. But this is so important what you're doing in just kind of talking back, interacting with these people. I know they love you, Lana. They really do. <laughs> you give them something because when you say that, when you start talk serious, you may not get the likes, but the moment you bring the controversy, that's when it flare up because they need it. They want to feel useful in that way and you're giving them something. So I'm hoping to hear more. It's not, history is not meant to make you feel comfortable. And that's one of the things somebody wrote uh, and that mm -hmm. it hit me. It's not supposed to make you feel comfortable. And if you're going to cherry pick and only take out the parts that make you feel comfortable and leave out the others, you're going, you're setting yourself up to be hurt. So when I talk about how the Irish influenced our accent, and I didn't say patois, I said our accent. Mm -hmm. I was referring to um, Jamaican standard English, standard Jamaican English. Um, and it wasn't just the Irish, by the way. It was the Portuguese. It was 
the Spanish, it was the English. I just mentioned the cadence as it pertains to my accent because I was being told, hey man, stop trying to be something you're not. You sound, you're trying to sound like a black person and you're appropriating African culture. And I go, wait a minute, no, 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 no. First of all, mistush. That's the first thing you should realize. Mistush bad. <laughs> and <laughs> I've been at one no shop, right? And so when you refer, when, when I listen to myself speak, I go, dude, you are so uptown. You couldn't be more uptown. And then, but that funny thing is one of my nicknames is Uptown Lorna. You know, there's two of me. There's Mad Chiny Gal and then there's the Uptown Lorna. And sometimes I'm trying to bring up Mad Chiny Gal to do a, a reel because I actually mm -hmm. have to go into character to do it. And Uptown Lorna shows up. I'm like, and I say, if I do it, and I say, if I go, I'm like, you know what? Let's just go with it. Because, you know, it's not working in Patois. It's going to go work in English. And to hear it, so people go, oh, you're trying to sound black. No, the cadence of the Uptown accent is very much Irish. That's but when it comes to other accents in different parishes and the Patois and so forth, it was highly influenced by the Spanish. The way how we pronounce certain words, A-E-I-O-U, the, how they do it. The reason why reggaeton is so easily adapted from reggae, why they were able to take our music and adapt it so easily to theirs is because of the similarities in the way we speak. Yeah. You want to talk about the appropriation of culture? Why don't we talk about how somebody created a beat, the Dembo beat, Shabarangs, remember Shabarangs, the Dembo beat? Mm -hmm. You should have copyrighted and go after everybody who used that beat because the whole of reggaeton is all about that beat. It's so too late. It, it's too late. Somebody's yeah. not rich. It's yeah. too late. No, Lana, because uh, it's it's taken over. It's taken over the the entire um you know um crop of music coming out of um you know is it Puerto Rico and um or even Central Central America they, they they're doing some of that um it's unfair and they're ripping off Jamaican artists they're ripping it off we're talking about hip hop hip hop came from Jamaica it did oh it absolutely I'm, did I'm not going to even touch that. <laughs> you want to talk about the appropriate that freaking shit makes me upset okay there you go bleep me again i'm sorry when i get mad i cuss when I hear reggaeton, I'm a realize that the guy who created the dembo, which is not getting royalties of it, they're mad. Of course, they're mad. That's my people. Even there's some loss going on. Hip hop was actually Jamaican. I'm like, Lord of mercy, you, you guys need to learn business. Isn't there some loss going on about that? Because I believe somebody decided that they're going to 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 um, sue them for copyright issues and so. But I have one yeah, last question. Everybody for copyright infringement. Jamaicans need to step up and realize that they have been more influential on Latin American and American music than we realize. And there's a lot of appropriation of our culture where to where it damages and it, our, our country and that our people are not getting paid for their artistic work. That that pisses me off to a great deal, and that that that's the appropriation of culture we need to be talking about. Uh, the reason why Jamaica can't grow marijuana and hemp and and invest in hemp products is because the United States has put you know restrictions on us and tells us what we can and cannot do in our own country, you know. And but no, it's legalized in America, but we still can't capitalize on it. You know, it, it is in their best interest to keep Jamaica and the Caribbean and South America and Central America poor because they want cheap fruit. You know, you look at. Um, was it the internet or something food company in Guatemala when mm -hmm. they, they, the CIA went in there and just installed their puppet government because they wanted cheap fruit. Manifest destiny means something completely different to the Caribbean than it does to America. When I heard about manifest destiny and I read about manifest destiny, I was taught manifest destiny in high school and I came up here to an American school because I went to college in America and I heard about manifest destiny. I go, no, no, no. And so I go, and they go, no, that's what it means. I go, oh, you, it's what you think it means. I'm sure you educate them. <laughs> no, I did not. I was educated by some of the small islanders because when we we learned about the West Indian Union in Jamaica, we were told one thing. And then you realize when you start mixing up with the Caribbean cultures in university, they go, okay, you Jamaicans need to stay in your lane. And I go, what happened? What happened? The right. dots in the the dots over there in the on the east are are, are talking. Like, stop calling us dots. I mean, like when we draw the map, we just go da 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 da, da with the pencil because we don't actually know where you are. <laughs> and they go, oh, <laughs> so 
sorry, I'm sure we know what they are, but there's a lot of you. There's uh, which which one of these are you guys? I'm not the French. Yeah, Turks and Caicos, my apologies. I don't know where your island is. We only focused over here on that great answer. And then they told us what we did to them in the West Indian Union. And I go, that's not what they told us, that we left them. Yeah, the, the, the smaller countries tend to be overlooked, even though they, you know, they, they contribute a lot to the Caribbean culture. You mentioned something about Guatemala that um, I don't know how familiar you are with that culture, but there is there's a lot of similarities in terms of the food and the saying, the saying, the folkways is very similar to Jamaica. You know, when Jamaican um, man would say, you tie me, you tie me. It is a it is a saying in 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 Guatemala. The many um plenty of the food, especially ground provisions, it is so similar. So there's a lot of things that you can find in uh, Guatemala that is in uh, Jamaica. So it is interesting that um Jamaica is shifting itself so far <laughs> only to Africa, not realizing that um part of our um ancestral heritage is also Spanish. And as you mentioned, Portuguese and 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 all those um other, other when I made one video, if I made that one video and everybody had a hot them, and I saw the compilation of people who were cussing me, you know, like my accent not come from no Irish. Me not done yet. Got take two panadol. Me not done yet. You had a hot. You got take two panadol. Me not done yet. Me say it's a mix. I only have ninety seconds to make a reel. Me tell you say it's a mix. Me I go bring in the Spanish. Me go bring in the Indian. Yes. Somebody wrote to me, somebody wrote to me and they were Pan-African and said, did you know that if you're not of African descent, you cannot use the word picnic because it's racist? Because, it, you know, this thing about saying that it means pick a ninny or pick a something. Of you just said a racist term. If you said the N-word on camera in America, regardless of what I got, Don Lennon got in trouble for saying it. Yeah, you, you, oh, you can only you're not get in trouble if you're a rapper, apparently. But Don Lennon said the N word because he thought he was black on CNN and got reprimanded for it. And so mm -hmm. imagine you just said that on your own program and they're going to go racism. The way how Jamaicans use it is not racist. And we, re we refuse to be, be thrown into that PC culture well, where we're dancing actually, around I mean, our own vernacular. Is it a Jamaican saying this or someone from the diaspora? The di um, African diaspora. Oh, so I Pan look the person. Pan okay. That's interesting. Yes. Well, here's the thing about here's the thing about picnic. I looked it up. I thought it was African. I thought it was West African because a lot of people were cussing me saying, "What do you mean it's not an African um dialect?" Look at words like picnic, and I'm like, "Yeah, exactly." Words that wait a minute, picnic is not an African word. Apparently, it's Portuguese. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, all of a sudden, all these other people. I'm reading the comments here, and I'm like, Jesus, I am learning from my own comment section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That word, it, uh, there's the Portuguese word, and then, and then the English word was pikni, and then we adopted it. So we thought, I thought it was West African, and then to learn it was Portuguese in origin. What? And then the other one was Ponani. Where did that come from? Ponani. Uh, God, it come from the Kama Sutra. It's Indian. Japanese? Indian. Oh, they, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is the thing? Kama Sutra. Okay. It's from the Kama Sutra. Yeah. And then to, to start studying like Indian meditation and other Indian stuff. And wait a minute. This sounds more like Rastafarianism. Like it is Rastafarianism. Wow. <laughs> Nothing Very is purely African in Jamaica. It's a lot of mix in there. And it's an insult to the other cultures to think that um, you can erase us and call us racist for trying to be included in our own culture. I refuse to be yeah. told again. I that believe Jamaican about, food. I, I believe is there's, not. <laughs> there's a lot of um, Jamaicans who have Chinese ancestor, uh, um, ancestral heritage. But because of the um the 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 mixture, the admixture that's involved, or especially over the years, it is not as evident. But if you look at the names, Lang. Like, you ever read you ever meet a market woman named Miss Lang? Yes. How much yes. market woman you know name it? That's a Chinese name. And the Lee. And I've known, yes. 
And so many of them um, doesn't even realize because again, nobody, you know, we're not doing the um, the the twenty three and Me or the Ancestry dot com to trace our heritage. I don't know. You said you trace your heritage back to um, South uh, China. How did you go about that? Is just true? No, listen. That 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 Ancestry kit keeps changing. Uh, first, it came to me and it says, "Hey, you're eleven percent other." When I looked at that other, it was very puzzling to me. Uh, it included Polynesia, oh. and it circled every freaking island over there, so, and every country in Asia, like inclusive of every, every, every country, Malaysia, Japan. I'm like, dude, I could have told you that. What kind of stupidness is this? But the 11% puzzled me. And then it kept shifting, and it says maybe this and maybe. That's how my ancestry comes out. It says a lot of maybes, mm -hmm. whereas other people's answer to come back and it was pretty more evident but dna doesn't really tell you where you're from because you have to understand immigration patterns especially in europe there was a lot of immigration patterns so even if your dna says you this is supposed to be portuguese this is supposed to be spain next couple of months you, you check it again and there's more data coming and go no no maybe it was actually irish because there's a lot of immigration going on in europe yeah. As, and if you test the royal family it will tell you that there are germans Oh, please. Yeah, Germans. <laughs> Saxa, COVID, or whatever. They changed their name to Windsor because of the of World War II. So um, you can't use DNA as evidence. So when it said all these things about my DNA and I started reading the history behind why, why they thought that I was that, I go, no, my family did not emigrate to California. You completely missed this part. And I've, and I've had... Um, talks with East Asian studies professors who have no idea how Jamaican uh, Chinese people got to Jamaica, which is such a huge part of our history. Are you it's talking about huge. Huge. those professors in the diaspora? United States, in the United States and in, in China, East Asian uh, studies professors in the United States and China have no idea how Chinese people got to Jamaica. No. And they are, these, this is supposed to be their profession. And here I am looking at them going, you don't know this. So if I do come off arrogant sometimes, it's because I do know my history. I studied that stuff. I was the one who was always getting yelled at in history class. Lorna Chin, how many times I have to tell you? History already happened. <laughs> you didn't read the book. You can't just make stuff up because I'm making stuff up because I didn't finish reading. <laughs> and I figured that's how it went. Yeah. And so she, when I, I think I, I said something to that same, one of those same professors recently, and I go, I showed her one of the movies and that it had gotten some of the things wrong in the movie. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I guess you can make stuff up um, <laughs> in history because we twist we twist things in the movies. Isn't that quite did go so, you know? Yes. And mm -hmm. she goes, you know, from ever since I knew you, you were always twisting it. So I guess you were destined for a career in entertainment. And I go, yeah, I was. Bridgerton was a good example. Um, sitting down with historians watching Bridgerton, they couldn't get over the fact that we were twisting history and putting Black people as dukes and so forth. But it's alternative history. And I enjoyed it. And of course... My husband was like, once you said a man put yet on a woman. <laughs> I'm like, honey, that's mean. But look at him. He's gorgeous. You know, I'm like, shh. Did they, get rid of, said that? did they get rid of the lead, by the way? He's not they didn't get rid of him. They wrote him out of it. That how the books are 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 um scheduled is they focus on one family at a time. Okay. So that one was the Duke and I. Mm -hmm. And in the next one, he kind of shows up as a minor character. So he's probably just an extra and he's not going to show up. Reggie, 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 Reggie or Reggie, he's not going to show up to be an extra. So we say goodbye to him. His career took off. Gorgeous, gorgeous man. And got, you know, that, 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 that one show just propelled him into stardom and his career has taken off. So kudos to him. Well, it's good, but, you know, they either can represent, you know, with, but at the same time, though, um, if it's not an historical representation, I mean, if it's not an accurate uh, representation of history, then where do we go with that? It's called entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and that's what no. you mean. Okay. Yeah, most of this, I'm like, I, I hate it when I used to watch Star Trek. And if you're, if you're actually paying attention, you notice that throughout my room, there are Star Trek mm -hmm. um let me see. Is this a thing have a thing where you flip the camera? Oh wow. There. Yeah, you have your collection. Yeah, I mean, um, 
I used to, I'm a huge Star Trek fan and sci-fi fan and people are always like, you know, in Jamaica, they go, chop, not not also. <laughs> and now we have iPads and right. doors that open, you know, you know, like like they did in the spaceship. Um not Nagoso, but that's what imagination does. You know, we we conceive of these things in for the movies and the shows, and it inspires a generation to go out there and try to create something that is similar to it. Oh, well, you I know mean, what? Bef- what? Before before I go, you said something. Let me talk because that's your you know your career is actually as you said in the entertainment industry. What do you think? I I spoke to this um, filmmaker in Jamaica. Um, Richard Brown what do you think about what these local filmmakers are trying to do I don't know if you're aware of them but they're producing a lot of stuff I mean like almost daily content and posting it um, call it movie movie like writing scripts directing all those type of things and they're showcasing Jamaica they're sh- showcasing the culture and, and so on um, from your perspective, you being in the movie industry and your uh, editor and all those things, I don't know if you get a chance to watch some of them. What do you think about that? Dancehall Queen, The Lunatic, Shatters. Okay. I think, um, what do you mean there? Nick Cannon did one recently. They don't get enough mainstream coverage. And when they do, I don't think they're showing the real culture. They're trying to appeal to a foreign audience. And I think maybe the lunatic got that better than everybody else, you know? That's all Queen was okay. What about when you try to the heart of they try to was way back, but you mentioned the, yeah. the Chinese producer for the harder they come. Yeah. So um when you try to appeal too much to an international audience you sell an image of Jamaica that's not authentic and true. Mm-hmm. You understand? Or or it goes over their head. And the reason for that is, and I had that had this conversation with a younger Jamaican just recently who was very upset at me for my use of certain languages in my videos. And it said it really hurt him. I'm a huge fan of classic Jamaican humor, Oliver Samuels. And if you study drama and I study drama growing up, you understand that humor. And a lot of that humor is politically incorrect in the United States. It, it's offensive to Americans. See, Oliver Samuels' humor is centered around making fun of the village idiot. Right. So why why would, I'm, I'm still, I, I still can't understand what, you know, some people, things just go over their head and they focus on one little thing. It just yeah. doesn't so interesting. A lot of, yeah, a lot of the things I would say, Oliver would have said it in his, in, 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 in his own, skits what well, go on yeah how oh, so much dance people there on yeah you know <laughs> not realizing he's also an idiot and um, but that's his character and mm. um so you can't air that in america on a prime time in america but you do that in jamaica and we get it so yeah. a lot of my humor is politically incorrect in the united states which is why i get a lot of pushback so you I uh, you watch me make a, a video and then you will see a population are laughing their asses off and then another public can go, why are you guys laughing? This is offensive. Of course it's offensive. It's funny. Yeah. But I understand my audience. And if you're offended, you're not my audience. And to be honest with you, I knew you were going to be offended. So I offended you on purpose. So let me ask you about the, um, what's his name? Is it, is it Kevin? And some of these um, rappers from the US who are um, actually using the Jamaican patois as a way, you know, to promote themselves. It's becoming a common thing now. I don't know if you, you're you seeing them. And so Jama- Jamaicans, the local Jamaicans are so busy on, on Instagram and TikTok nowadays telling people, you know, this is how you pronounce this, you know, stop, stop, stop using our language to, to, <laughs> uh, it's like, you know, so they're not just fighting with you, Lord, they're fighting with everybody. But um, they, there's a lot of um, people, um, African-Americans, um, white Americans, you know, posting, you know, their, and putting in their two piece about Jamaican, trying to say Jamaican words and languages and so on. So it's like, you know, Jamaica spent time defending their culture on 
um, on these platforms. What do you think about that? I know that Jamaicans are not defending their culture on my platform. <laughs> See, but the thing about Instagram is it has tools. And if you know how to read the tools, Mm -hmm. and they've asked me about reading the room I read the room very well I know what sells and what doesn't sell you don't go from 154 to 70,000 in less than four months that's impossible and to to be told and and be whose face is casted on so many of these academic programs that I, Dr. Omar Johnson the di African diaspora to be told that you're the talk of the town in in, in academia um that doesn't happen unless you push the envelope. There is no such thing as appropriation of culture when it comes to Jamaican culture. You understand? Because we are out of many, many one people. We are diverse. There's so, too many cultures, yes. That, so it's yeah. a representation. And then the other day, uh, Volkswagen did, a, did an ad where the guy comes out of his Volkswagen and he ended up speaking in a Jamaican accent. Mm -hmm. The Jamaican people thought it was flattering. They loved it. You know who got upset? The white people in America. Yeah. That's appropriation of culture. Shut the hell up. It's not. Let us defend our own culture. Just shut the hell up. Stay in your lane. We like that stuff. We think it's appreciated. We think it's funny. The other thing that we would like you to stop doing is to telling white people to stop braiding them here because it's appropriating African culture. You want to know why? Because lots of people down a country make a living braiding white people here. You go it's to the, the resort, it's, hey, would you like to braid? We want you to, to, to feel our culture. We want you to braid your hair. We want you to put on the Rasta belt and wear the African colors and, and appreciate and 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 and. and understand the culture stop telling us that we're appropriating it if you can't tell me that i will cuss your ass oh <laughs> shit did that again so uh, yeah it's it's part of the the the, the, the tourism it, you know the the tourism market you know people come to jamaica and they transform themselves into a jamaican um yes. I, I remember and when, when they i was... do that they go back to america and the black people and the white people they go what are you doing you're appropriating culture no left them we're trying to make money shut the hell up <laughs> Yeah, Jamaica, um, you know, our our economy is built on the 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 tourism and you know, and agriculture and all those other things. But mainly, and especially for the local people living in the in the hotel industry area, that is one way. So why not, right? Lana, it's been fun. I have to go. So <laughs> you're welcome. I just sit and listen to you because you, you're so interesting, so animated, and just you know, fun and bubbly. And I'm looking forward to to list, to watching a lot more of your videos, but I'm hoping that you you kind of do a little tour on this. I mean, it's just my idea, of course. Let me um, let me put this out there. And if this goes on your show, if you want me to do it and you're willing to fund the camera equipment and all that, the cameraman and all that stuff, then mm -hmm. call me. I will I'm more than willing to, to produce host and, and put it together. But to, to dip into my pocket and do it myself, it's going to be on my terms when I have time. Yeah, you understand? it is interesting. And, 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 and I'm sure there's people out there um, listening to this. And the fact that it is so easy for you to transform yourself into this and, you know, just take on the topics like that. I'm thinking, you know, most of the work is already done. It's just to get to the place and do it. So thank you for um, joining Tenses Life Factor. Thank you for informing. I'm learning a lot from you as well, just in this, um, the history and all that stuff. And I hope we can connect again. All right? You're welcome. Don't worry. Um, just let me know when you want to do another one. <laughs> I watch from the video, then I call you to it said, you know what? You have to explain this to me. <laughs> yes. No problem. Uh, no problem. Take all care, right. Bye-bye. Take it easy. All right. Bye.